Good morning. I'm here to go over um, Excel homework 5.1 lines with you today. Um, this this is going to be the only Excel homework that you will have this week since you will have your um, quiz four also due this Sunday. So I'm just trying to keep at least, well, about four assignments per week. So this will be that one Excel homework this week. So um, I already downloaded the file and I got it opened right here. Um, I guess you can wait until uh, we go over lesson 5.1 on this Wednesday um, and then do this homework after we talk about slope and y-intercept. Or I guess if you do this now with me um, or before Wednesday, it would be a good preview of what you're going to learn on Wednesday. Okay. All right. Step one, X start Excel, download and open the workbook named lines. Step two, in cell B10, calculate the linear function for output in cell B9 and input in cell A10. Fill B10 down the column to cell B30. All right, so let's see. Let's go to B10 first, B10. Um, B10 is right here. So they want you to find the output that will go in here. And we're using the function y equals negative 5x plus 3. And our input is negative 10. So let me go ahead and start this. Equals negative 5 times. The input is 10. And we're going to add 3. So we're basically plugging in negative 10 into our function listed above. So I hit enter. So the answer is 53. Let's go ahead and fill this down all the way. So that's what we got. Um, uh, looks like x is de uh, the, the output is decreasing. Notice it's going down by, in fact, 5. As you see, the slope is negative 5. So um, um, slope is negative 5. So each time um, as x gets one bigger, y value is getting 5 smaller. So 48 minus 5 is 43. 43 minus 5 is 38 and so on. But what else? Uh, what we noticed is that when x is 0, y value is 3. Because if you plug in 0 into negative 5x plus 3, uh, the negative 5x will turn into 0, and 0 plus 3 will give you zero or uh, 3. So the y-intercept here is 3. So that's what we see. The bigger the x gets, the smaller y value will be, since this is a decreasing linear function. So we are done with step 2. Let's go look at step 3. In B C10, calculate the linear function for outputs in cell C9 and inputs in a10. Now guys, look, I think we're just going to go ahead and take care of step 2 through 6 right now all together because these are just doing the same exact thing. I think on the Google slides, I just ask you to try this yourself. But let's, since this is a video, I plan on going over every step. Let's do this together. So that equal negative 2, negative 2 times um, the input is negative 10 and then add the y-intercept of 3. So the output will be 23. I'm going to copy this down. It. Let's keep going. Now, this one, the slope is zero. So, no matter what we are multiplying to zero, we're always going to end up getting a zero for the first term. So, I know the all the output will be three. So, let's do zero times negative 10. And I'm going to add three. Hit enter. Let's go ahead and fill this down. And we're expecting this is a constant function. All the output will be three. Now, that's perfect. Now let's try this one equal two times x value of negative 10 plus 3. Hold on a second. I think no, no, everything is good. All right, let's fill this down all the way down over here. Oh, hello. Oh, I didn't fill it down correctly. We're all the way down. That's good. Okay. Now last one equal sign five times negative 10 plus 3. Hit enter. So you will get negative 47. Sorry if I'm going way too fast, but let me just, well, if you do want to see what I entered, I did take a screenshot of these on Google Slides, but all we're really doing is replacing this X by negative 10. We're clicking on A10, and then we're going to just use cell referencing, um, relative cell reference. If you just copy this down, uh, they're just going to like this cell right here. They're going to use seven as their input. Notice they're using A27. So that's what I wanted them to do. So we're done filling out this big table. So you are done with steps one through six. Step seven, they want you to determine the y-intercept of each function in I12. So let's go over there, I12. That's right here, I12. 
what is the y-intercept of each function. I was a little worried because linear function, I mean, we just looked at five different linear functions and um, they may have all different y-intercepts. We're just given one cell, but take a look. It was y equals negative 5x plus 3, y equals negative 2x plus 3, y equals 0x plus 3, and y equals 2x plus 3. You see what they're adding. The y-intercept is when the x value is 0. And look, all of their y values are 3. So um, the y-intercept is simply 3. Let's move on. Um, step number 8. In cell I15, determine which slope from the five different linear functions will give the largest y value for x equals negative 1.5. Hmm. Let's take a look. Did we use negative 1.5? We really didn't, right? Um, but what we know is um, we're plugging in a negative value. And I wonder if we can just use these numbers. Now, what we know is the number is going to be in between negative 2 and negative 1. Negative 1.5 is in between these two, right? So um, the, the y value for the first function will be in um, the positives in between 13 and 8. Um, y value for the second function will be in between 7 and 5. We can say that's just going to be 6, right? Right in between 7 and 5, we're going to have 6. That's going to be 3. This will be at 0 because what's the only number that's in between? Well, I shouldn't say the only number, uh, but linear functions are um, proportional. So right in the middle, that's going to be 0. But 0 and then this one, if you take a look, um, that's going to give you that's going to give you a negative output. So what we know is, you notice how this one, in between 13 and 8, that's going to give you the biggest uh, y value um, if you plug in negative 1.5. So what's going to be the answer? Uh, which, what is the slope of these, um, this function right here? The slope is negative 5. Okay, um, step 8 is done. Now step 9. In cell I19, determine which slope causes the graph to move downward from left to right. It's going down from left to right. This is a decreasing function. So should the slope have positive or negative sign, right? Um, which will a positive, I'm reading this one now, will a positive or negative slope cause the graph to move downward from left to right? So this is a decreasing function. So the slope must be negative, okay? All righty. We're almost done. Step number 10 um, in cell K27 to Q41. So that blue area that we just kind of saw in that blue area, I want you to insert a scatter chart to show five different linear functions. So go ahead and select A9 to F30, A9 to F30. And then we're going to go to recommended chart and choose scatter with scatter straight lines and markers. Okay, I'll do that much and come back and change the title soon. A9 through F30. A9. A9 is right there through F30. Oh, so almost all these all these values in this table. Okay, so that's the range. A9 through F30. Go to insert. Go to click. Insert. Recommended chart. And they want it scattered with line. Oh, and this this one, this one is scatter. Oh, this one is line. This is scatter with line. Now, they're both scatter, but I do have five different functions. And the first one, I only saw one, two, three different lines of blue, orange, and gray. But I like this one because this one has one, two, three, four, five different lines. And I know I have five different functions. Click this one. All righty, let's bring this down. They want it, and this is exactly what they wanted. Um, it's got five different lines for five different linear functions that we had. Um, it's got the lines and it has the, the, the mar what's it called, the points plotted. So I think we got this, yes. And uh, what else? Uh, apply style number one on the design tab, add chart title and choose the above chart option. And then we're gonna replace this title with line with an exclamation mark. Okay, let's see. Let me go back here and change the chart title to Oopsies. Line with exclamation mark. All right, that looks good. Okay, and that must be it. I'm going to go ahead and save this file. And close it so that I can submit this with you. 
Oh, I better, I better save it. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and choose file that I just worked on. And it was probably in here. Oh gosh, I need to clean my download folder. Oh, yeah. oh here it is. Okay, so open. And I'm going to upload and submit for grading. Hopefully we see 8 out of 8 soon. All right, go all the way to the bottom. I may go to the student grade book. Now, a couple of you emailed me last week about um, the grade form Excel homework 4.3 budget not showing up immediately. So I actually had to go back manually to change that. But oh, I was lucky because I see my grade right here. Let me click on this and see that it is 8 out of 8. Let's see that together, guys. All right, ready? See score? Ta-da! So that's good. So that's what you want to do. I know when I went over this kind of qu quickly. Um, uh, but um, this will be very easy if, uh, well, after the lesson on Wednesday when we go over uh, lesson 5.1. But remember, I also have the Google Slides available for you um, if you'd rather take a look at that. Okay? All right. Thank you. And um, I'll see you again for 5.1 lesson this Wednesday. Okay? Bye-bye.